priesthood, we know right away he's talking not to, not to you, but to you, right? A priesthood. A holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. There's, a, there's an excellency of life, a difference that Christ makes, but people won't see it in your life by itself. And here's why. Because in your life all by itself, nobody bugs you. In your life all by itself, nobody mistreats you. You need the kind of abuse you can only find in a good church. <laughs> so that pe I'm serious. So that people will look at you and say, wow, that's, that looks like the kind of love for an enemy that, that God had for us in Christ while we were enemies. That's right in the Bible. We were enemies. He died for us. Where do people see the excellency of that kind of life? Here. Here. You all know this is true. There's nothing that makes you feel godlier than sitting. I have my chair in my family room by the fireplace, little table, cup of tea, some light jazz or classical music. I'm sorry, I, I was going to lie and say praise and worship music. It's not. It's usually classical music, my Bible. And as I read, I underline and I make notes. And you just feel, I must be the godliest person in Canada. <laughs> and then somebody says something about you that isn't true in your local church. That dirty. And all. Why does God allow that to happen? I'll tell you why. God says, see what's in you, Don? Do you see what's in there? <laughs> I was just using Pastor Brian to reveal it. Don't we do that? We pray like the psalmist, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. And you know what he does? He lets some student driver back into your car. <laughs> and you get all mad. Or you ding another car in the parking lot and you're tempted just to drive away. Nobody saw you and not even leave a note. God says, you see what I'm doing? You see what I'm doing? You asked me to search your heart. I'm just revealing all sorts of stuff in there. Okay, so the point of all that is we need the body of Christ. It's here in a corporate sort of a setting. Who called you out of darkness. Proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a, here it is, people. Now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, now you have received mercy. Okay, I, I can't take any more time on that. Receiving God's mercy. I beseech you, brothers, by the mercies of God. Now, I want to ask you something. Is receiving God's mercy just a personal experience, or is it a corporate experience? And what Peter is saying here, race, priesthood, nation, people, 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 Eight times what Peter is saying is, if you want to talk about God's mercy, here's what it does. It creates a people, a group. Once you're saved, it's a corporate experience. There is no solitary Christian identity. Christ is formed in our lives by making us not a group of persons, but a single people. One people whose very existence and identity can only be found corporately. 